When I came out here in 2014 to start revitalizing the farm, I realized that I was up against quite a few challenges. So some of the big weather issues that we see here, where we are specifically, is periods of drought and then periods of excessive rainfall. So we really see those swings and we're seeing them more and more as time is going on. We're also seeing high winds as something that has caused issues for our farm. I was born in 1954, so that was the year of Hurricane Hazel. In my understanding, that was the first major hurricane that it had in this region for like for 50 years. And now it's happening more often. In 98, we had two hurricanes. 2016, we had a major hurricane. 2018, we had a major hurricane. So the, the frequency of climate change is, is really taking effect. If you don't stay on top of the innovation, stay on top of what we're dealing with with climate change conditions, you're not going to be successful out here. the no-till process, cover crops. It was totally foreign language to me. Through the many different classes that was offered through Carolina Farm Stewardship, the support of Corporate Extension at North Carolina a and I had to go through an educational process. In terms of climate resiliency practices, whether it's compost building, crop rotations, or cover cropping, our extension agent is always willing to answer the questions that we have, help us research, and help us come up with resources. We probably go to three to four different workshops a year. AT University advises me more with a knowledge of certain crops. On their small farm, they had illustrations of different types of cover crops and the benefits of the cover crops. At one point, I kind of questioned the process. How do I farm without turning the land and plowing the land? Now I have figured it out. You don't have to turn the land 18 inches and leave it resting for the winter like I was always taught. Less disturbance is better. Cover crops for us play several different roles. They allow field to rest and soil to not be cultivated or tilled. And they're also preventing air and oxygen from mixing feeding your soil microbiology in a different way than your crash crops would. All this other land here was in cover crops this past winter, and you see no weed problems in that land. The cover crops that we're using has good micronutrition to the soil, which reduces the amount of fertilizer. We tried to reduce tillage, which reduces compactation of the soil, and so we definitely seen it in the last five years of this land breathing a whole lot better. In the Piedmont area here, we deal with red clay. That red clay now is beginning to change. We have taken the organic matter, we have left it on the soil to build up the soil quality. Now when we have the major storms, with the buffers that I have, what I have in the field, the grass that I have in the pasture land, I can see the benefits every day out here on the farm what we've seen over time is our soil really handle rainfall and drought so that the mountains and the valleys of our soil moisture have been reduced. We've also invested in tunnel infrastructure, so high tunnels and also caterpillar tunnels. With the high tunnels and the caterpillar tunnels, those are at season extenders. We can control the environment. We control the water that they get. We can control insect damage and things like that. Before, when they were in the field, we had lots of rain. We had a lot of tomatoes I had to throw away. And I look at the yield and the quality of the fruit. If they were out in the field, they would not have lasted but four weeks.
with the setup of the tunnel, we were really able to see increased yields pretty quickly. And then we were encouraged to grow crops that otherwise we wouldn't have grown in the field. Great. We were able to really explore those higher value crops that helped with our profitability overall as a farm. Across the board, there has been major savings. I can see where I've been able to cut back on fuel usage, cut back on the use of chemicals, cut back on the use of fertilizer. Less tillage is saving in fuel. The tractors ain't got to go out there but two to three times versus 14 to 15 times to a conventional farmer. And then the insect pressure is down probably three-fourths. It reduces the amount of times that you have to spray. And that area gives us a better outlet of developing specialty crops, which sells at a whole lot higher price than a regular conventional crop. To know your numbers is to be empowered by them. And so having the financial piece in play has helped us make good, balanced decisions that we couldn't make if we didn't know. We've really seen our farm grow economically and be able to support us as a family, which is a big ask of land. And so because of that, like we take it pretty seriously and, and I hope over time that communities will see farms as, as places that are working hard to mitigate the effects of climate so that people can still have access or even increase access to high quality food. This land is mother, it feeds everything. It resources everybody, it educates everybody, it provides everybody. That's what life is about, is sustaining life. Anything that sustains life, we're training and we teach our children how to do it. I'm gonna put some feed in here. My biggest wish is to educate small farmers how to deal with climate change, how to be more resilient, and to put practices in place that's going to benefit them and their farms. You know, increasing one small farm's resiliency increases food system resiliency, increases food access, and we all need food. When farmers are valued for their work, then everybody in the community can benefit.